Hey everybody, it's Scott Fox. It's time for Startup Office Hours. Welcome to our monthly show where I turn on the camera here at lunchtime here in my office in Southern California. I'm here to help you move your startup farther, faster, and hopefully do some good in the world too. My thesis is that the world could be a better place, A, <laughs> and B, that the politicians aren't really going to do that for us. So C, it's up to us. Uh, entrepreneurs and startup founders are the most innovative, get things done people I know. We tend to be optimists as well, sometimes even a little too optimistic. But without that kind of positive outlook, the world is not going to improve. So I'm here to help you and each help each other and to meet each other to uh, hopefully make the world a better place. So I've just turned on the chat room there and you can join us there and say hello. Hopefully you can hear and see me. Let me know if you can hear and see me, that's always helpful. And um, we're gonna get going here with questions from the audience. There we go. Here come some folks in the chat room, checking in looks like from YouTube. Um, and uh, Kelsey, hey Kelsey, uh, on LinkedIn, great. Uh, let me know, so I guess you guys can hear me. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good step forward, often have difficulties with that. And if you're having trouble on any of these platforms, whether you're say you're on LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube or somewhere else or listening on the podcast, um, you can try one of the other ones, right? Um, there's several platforms and they don't always all work at the same time, of course, because it's the internet. So if you're having trouble on LinkedIn, say come over to YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, come over to Facebook. And if you're on Facebook, <laughs> then go over to Blog Talk Radio or the podcasts and you can listen. So um, so we'd like to uh, here to help you, and this is free and fun, hopefully. And uh, when you check in there in the uh, chat room, I'm happy to hear from you, especially those of you who might be from overseas. I'm trying to do this to spread the Silicon Valley point of view uh, across the world. Well, not, that's not exactly right. Not the Silicon Valley point of view. Uh, the reason I do this is because I don't like the Silicon Valley point of view. The Silicon Valley point of view, in my mind, is that uh, we make a whole bunch of money, and then we talk to each other and make more money, and we don't really invite the rest of the world in. And I'm here because I am a Silicon Valley veteran. I, I went to Stanford for grad school, for example. Um, but I, I'm i more de democratically minded, I guess. In fact, I've written three books. You see these books here, these three? Uh, these are in English. The others are foreign translations. So if you're here because you've read my books, um, they're all about trying to help regular folks like I used to be go from being outsiders to being more insiders. Uh, because again, that's the engine of progress that I see in our world today. So if you're here because you read uh, the Japanese one or the Turkish one or the Polish one or the Japanese one, welcome to you too. And um, hope to hear and see more of you as we participate here. Now, I'm going to put up the link right now for the backstage, uh, the backstage cameras. And if you'd like to come in and ask a question, uh, then here's you, know, you want to turn on your webcam and then go to that URL. Pretty easy. And we've got half a dozen people back there already. I can see Eric and Ulrich and Randy and Patrick, uh, among others. And if you want to join us, please do. We'll be happy to chat with you. It'd be nice to see some ladies. It looks like we got a, a, a group of all, all men. So that's fine. I'm a man, obviously. <laughs> but but we, uh, we're happy to help the, uh, the other half of the world as well. So um, and then gentlemen and ladies, if you join us backstage, I would love in the chat the chat room that you have available back there. And I'm talking to Patrick, Randy, Ulrich, and Eric, and looks like some other folks are coming in. Uh, Holly and Andrew, if you could type in the private chat there a little bit, like Eric did, what it is you want to talk about, that would be really helpful for me. I'll try to put together a flow in the show so that we, you know, the, the topics lead into one each other sort of naturally. So if you could just type in real quick there and backstage, that would be great. And if you are elsewhere in the world, you can come and chat uh, online any number of places. Um, let's see, wanted to, let me just give you a few more of our, we've got a few quick announcements and then we'll get going. Oh, Pat, uh, pitch. Okay, so some people like to pitch their, uh, as well. Uh, I just put that one up. So we'll do some pitch practice later as well. And these are just quick, like two minute pitches. Okay. Not the full deck and all that. Right. But just verbal two minutes. And the idea is to give feedback. I'm not writing checks today, although I'm an active angel investor. This is more just for everybody to meet each other and get some feedback from each other. Okay. And build your own networks because that's how you get funded, honestly. So I can see everybody getting busy in the chat room. That's fantastic. I don't have all the answers. So I encourage you to meet each other. Go ahead. Post your LinkedIn 
friends and your uh, even your email addresses if you want. Uh, don't necessarily post anything too confidential because this is public and will be uh, shown on the internet in all sorts of places. Here's my LinkedIn if you want to come and say hello to me. I get lots and lots of inbound though. So if you do say hello, and I'm, I would be happy to link with you, just give me a quick one-liner about how you know me because I get so much spam, you know, all kinds of people trying to help me <laughs> with businesses. Um, but if you'd like to say hello, that would be great. Just tell me who you are a little bit and that you were here for startup office hours. Okay, so a um, couple disclaimers. Let's see here. How about this one? This one, this is being recorded and will be shared online. So like I said, don't share anything too uh, confidential. We also, I want to make clear, this is not qualified legal or financial advice. Your mileage may vary and it's up to you to make something of your life. I'm doing my best. I'm volunteering here to try to help, but this is up to you and you should not take this too seriously. I'm just some guy you met on the internet. <laughs> okay. So take this about as seriously as you would advice uh, like in a Reddit group or something. Okay. Maybe even less seriously. Uh, depending on the group. Uh, oh, and who am I? So, okay, so I'm the one with the microphone, first of all, because I volunteered to do this, but also because I'm a long-term serial internet entrepreneur. I've been raising money uh, for my own companies, building companies, helping other people raise money, investing in companies for decades now, since the first dot-com boom. I went to graduate school at Stanford and I got in early on the internet thing. And uh, I've written these books, as I mentioned. These days, I'm an active angel investor. I'm active with groups like Tech Coast Angels. I'm the chairman of Stanford Angels for Orange County, California, where I live. I'm LP in several funds, et cetera, et cetera. So I've seen lots and lots of deals. And my focus really is on the seed stage and pre-seed stage, not in investing in everybody that I meet, but in trying to help everybody that I meet. So if you'd like to learn more about me or get involved, um, a couple URLs. Well, there's a page on me about me on Wikipedia um, that if somebody wants to look at that, the best way to get involved, though, is to go and join this newsletter list. The Startup Council here, this is a group I started to help uh, entrepreneurs like you all over the world. And through the magic of the internet, we can connect. And I'd like you to connect with each other and connect with us. And these newsletters are all about uh, introducing you to opportunities and education and things you can do to build your business. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So um, ho hopefully that is useful to some of you. All right. Um, let's see, got a lot of, a lot of warm up here, right? Okay. Uh, did that, did that. Just checking off my list here, guys. And then we're going to get to it. Oh, invite your friends. We're getting going here. Love to have more people join the show, right? Because even if you don't want to talk and come on camera, you can listen and hopefully benefit. So I've been doing these for a long time. There's a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel. Um, that's youtube.com uh, slash, surprisingly, Scott Fox. Uh, but the Startup Council is here uh, in a variety of ways. There's a whole bunch of services listed on our website, and that's startupcouncil.org. I don't seem to have a Chiron for that. But you guys can spell, right? If you're smart enough to get here, you can spell. Let me, f wow, I don't have that one. Okay, well, there it is, startupcouncil.org. Oh, it's just like that. I guess I don't need one. There it is, right there, okay? So go over there, uh, check out what we can do for you. Um, and the services are free or as low cost as I can make them, trying to help everybody. And then if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do that. All right, so I want to say a couple quick words. Let's see who's in the chat room here. Um, okay, so there's Randy. Randy wants to talk about bridge loans. Thank you, Randy. Ulrich. Uh, okay, Ulrich. Well, yeah, this is practice, Ulrich. If you're, not, I, I'm not writing checks here. <laughs> Sorry. So if that's not of interest to you, you can hang up or just uh, keep watching. Um, okay, Holly. Okay, Holly. Uh, what is it you want to talk about, though, Holly? What's your question? Um, Andrew, please talk about how to raise money before having a... Yes, let's do that. Okay. Oh, there. Sorry, Holly. You did post something else. Okay, I'll get back to that. And it looks like Patrick has a similar question. And uh, pro forma income... Okay, cool, guys. That's all good stuff. We will get to all of that and more. And I can see a bunch of stuff coming into the chat room as well. So let's do this one more thing, and then we're going to hit it. Okay. Um, there's that. Um, actually, no, let me do this one. Let's do this. We should talk about our sponsors real quick. Okay. So I do this, I pay for this. It's, it's not really expensive to be honest, but it's my time and my expertise. Right. Um, but we have a couple sponsors who are smart enough and generous enough to come on board and try to help you as well. The one I'm a big fan of is this one and that's cake. Here's the, here's their logo. And you can see on the, on the ticker there, um, cake equity. So what these guys do, guys and gals, uh, they're based in Brisbane, Australia. And I'll full disclosure, I'm an investor in this company. I think they're so sharp. And they build um, 
capitalization management tools, right? So if you're an early stage founder, if you're on the venture capital type path, this is really important. So it's not like if you're going to uh, build a pizzeria or a nail salon or like a real world business or even a services business. But if you're on a venture capital type high growth path, you're going to need to issue stock to a whole bunch of people over time. And tracking that is a nightmare. <laughs> so and it gets harder. Right? Like You might think you have it under control when you're pre-seed, but it goes it gets increasingly complex, especially once you start hiring people, right? Because you're issuing options all over the place, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a problem I've seen myself for decades. I've had it myself. Many of the startups that I mentor or invest in have this problem. So Cake, here's the point. Cake does this really well. They have built tools from Australia that serve the whole world. And all of us are incre increasingly global, right? So you can, it's really, it's, it's kind of like Carta or Pulley, if you've seen systems like that, but much cheaper, much easier to use, much friendlier, and, and they're nice, and they're also sponsoring the show. So, and you can get 20% off if you go to that URL. Okay, so that's Cake. If you're thinking about cap table management stuff, that's what you should do. Also say a quick plug for two services that we have here, which is, these are, okay, uh, let me turn that one around. High tech, right? Look at this, you like this high tech? Uh, there, okay. So these, these, these are services I built for you, okay? So both of these are designed to get you guys online easier so you can reach more investors more quickly, cheaper, and with greater transparency, especially if you're like I used to be kind of an outsider, right? You're not from San Francisco. You didn't go to Silicon Valley. You don't have an engineering degree, all that kind of fancy stuff, right? Because the fact is, if you live, say, in the Bay Area, and you're a white guy with a grad degree in computer science from Stanford, things are going to go a lot easier for you than for the rest of us. Uh, and even for me, I'm, I'm a white guy and I eventually did go to Stanford, right? But the rest of the world, that's what these are for. Okay, so hold on. So this one is a directory of startup investors, as the name suggests. 3,000 investors. We've scoured the internet and tried to find a whole bunch of people who invest in early stage startups. And you can search them. That's the point. This is a research tool. This is not a spam tool. You go on here and you can search for exactly what you do. There's 48 different categories of investors and you can drill down to what you do and how you do it and find investors that already invest in that stuff. That's the key. You don't want to be in the wrong room. Pitching investors don't give a shit about what you're doing. You want to find people that already are interested, right? It makes it so much easier. And I'm sure we'll talk about that in the show. So that's this. And there's a discount on the site. Uh, Hold on, I'll turn it on in a second. And then this one. So this is a directory for you. You can post yourself. So if you're a startup and you live in Indiana or you live in Mumbai or you live in Manila, right? Um, or rural Kentucky, right? You can get on this and it's um, idea is to list everybody in the same place in a standard format so that we, the investors, can find you more easily. And that's the hard part, right? Is getting visibility. And guess what? This has the same 48 categories that this one does so that people can find you. And we as investors can drill down to find exactly the kind of deals that we want. And that the idea is to make this more transparent, more efficient for you to find capital and for capital to find you. Okay. And the discount is the trial free trial code on this investor's directory. It's SID launch, all caps, SID launch. I might have this in a Chiron. Hold on. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Uh, oh, I guess I got a better one here. This is a better one for you guys since you're watching. Bronze Beta 50. And this is good forever because it's a it's low cost. I'm making, but we have to cover the cost. This has taken over two years to build, right? So Bronze Beta, and that will do on the recurring uh, billing as well. And it's like forty dollars or something. It's it's really really cheap. And then this one, the startups directory NSD Beta 50. Okay, all right. Enough commercials. Let's get on to this. And if you are watching now, thanks for being here. You can comment, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> okay. All right. Let's make this more fun. Okay. Let's, I'm going to bring everybody on. So Andrew, Holly, turn on your cameras. Uh, Roderick, Jason, Alex, turn on your camera. Let's see how many people. We got a full house today. This is exciting. Here comes the gang. All right. Andrew, you got to turn on your camera. Um, one now. There's more of you. There's Andrew. Cool. Holly, turn on your camera, please. Um, come on, guys. There it is. Okay. And here's Eric. Eric, you're a frequent flyer here, I think. There's Ulrich and Randy and Patrick. Look at that. Full house. Okay. So who's this one? There you go. Get your face in there. There he is. <laughs> Looking at your ceiling there. Okay. Cool. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Um, 
Okay, so let's go around the room. So uh, what what are your questions? Just tell the audience real quickly, and then I'll try to um, mush them into a, a reasonable order, okay? And uh, Holly, you got to come on here. This is a whole bunch of dudes. Let's go. Okay, so let's, um, how about, um, Eric, you were here first. What, what do you want to talk about today, Eric? Just uh, one <clears throat> one thing I keep running into, and I just, whenever I can do, I can do everything, graphics and all kinds of fun stuff. I mean, you, I, I did 300 graphics for, for something I'm working on, no problem. The stuff I have a hard time with is, it's a pro forma income projection, and it's okay. a chicken egg problem. How do you yep. project something you don't have? Yep, fair enough. Great question. Okay, we will. We will do that one. Okay. Ulrich, how about you? Did you wanted to practice your pitch or you, you don't? Hello, I absolutely do. Um, hello, everyone. Hello, Scott. Um, so uh, Scott's reply at first was um, uh, he's not going to write checks. I fully understand. Uh, what I have, Scott, is uh, during the development of a marketplace that I have, I have an MVP. Uh, sort of marketplace uh, is that I came up with an absolutely great brand and marketing concept. Okay. And okay, well, hold on. So that's good. We'll, we'll do the pitch. That that that, that let, all I'm trying to do right now is figure out our our order of operation. So if you can stick around, happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Patrick. How about you? What's on your mind? Sorry. Okay. Um. So I'm kind of wondering. Uh, I've got. I guess two two different things right now. Uh, number one is trying to figure out how the best approach is for uh, raising something that is in the in the prototype stage. We have a good prototype, okay, uh, right now, but we're trying to uh, uh, you know I'm trying to get it out there. And then uh, the second thing is for something that is an entertainment product versus uh, versus funding something that is just like a solving a straightforward business problem. Uh, so those are the two questions mainly for me. Okay, cool. And where are you calling from? Uh, I'm Los Angeles, Glendale. Technically. Okay, you're nearby. That explains the entertainment angle. Got it. Okay. <laughs> uh, th let's go to Andrew and then Roderick. Andrew, what's on your mind? So I had a similar question to Patrick, but I was wondering how to raise money before the prototype stage. Okay. That sounds like maybe we'll start with you because that's the earliest bit, right? Okay. How about you, Roderick? What's what's on your mind? Roderick, can you unmute Roderick and tell us what you'd like to talk about? Wow, uh, the first two people, they actually, those are questions I have, so that's good, okay. but another, another yes. you hear me? Yes. Oh, do you yes, hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're gonna have to move on. Sorry, Roderick. Oh, okay. So the last question I have, the last question that I have is, how do you go about if you don't have an? Oh, his connection's bad. Yeah, I think your connection's bad, Roderick. I'm yeah. sorry. We're gonna have to move on. Wow. Try to call in again. Re reconnect. Okay. Happy to have you, but I, we can't hear you. Okay, uh, Jason. How about you? What's on your mind? Yeah, so um, a company that is a it's a marketplace that is connect. It's a business to business marketplace, and I had my first angel meeting last week, and I feel like I'm going to get the same question. There's not going to be a lot of initial uh, revenue because you're just going to try to grow the network. So, yeah. how do I create a value proposition for an angel investor? We already did our pre-seed funding. I have a technical co-founder. Um, I have a clear cap table, but there's not going to be a bunch of revenue initially. So I want to be able to say the value is in the network, not in, uh, you know, it's not like a product we're trying to see if we have customers. Yeah, got it. That's a, yeah, it's a recurring issue. I hear you. Okay, happy to talk about that. Uh, and Alex, how about you? Um, I'm just really just here to, this is my first time here, so I'm just kind of checking it out. Um, I, uh, a couple of questions will be the pre-seed uh, questions that they already brought up. Okay, perfect. That's fine. Well, we'll get going then. If you have another question, then we'll we'll uh, we'll do that. Can you all just smile for a second and give me a wave or something? We need these photos for for uh, social media, right? 
with the boys club today. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, okay. So if, and let me also say we, the, the room is full. There's only room backstage for 10 folks. So anybody that's trying to get in as these folks cycle through, they will hang up and come back. Uh, and hopefully rejoin us on YouTube or LinkedIn somewhere else, and then hopefully you can get in. And gentlemen, as we co uh, cover your questions, I'm going to ask you to hang up and check in uh, over on YouTube or some other, one of the other more public links, if you don't mind. Okay, so let me look at my notes here, and we will slow this down a little bit. And um, Holly, I didn't bring you on because your camera looks like you're having technical difficulties, um, and I can't even see your... Uh, Randy, I didn't cover you, did I? No, I, th I thought perhaps maybe because you already read my uh, my chat, maybe you, you're going to respond to that. Sure. Uh, anyway, as, as every, we're slightly different. Everybody else, it sounds like, um, are looking for pre-seed or early. We're already, we've spent a year and a half in development. Now we're go-to-market. And Great. so we're looking for basically uh, bridge funding. Uh, we've got commitments from clients for orders and for, uh, um, you know, for our services. It's just turning out to be a 30 30-day close window or 60-day. After we get more settled, then, of course, we're going to be looking for VC funding to grow bigger, uh, to grow our sales. So we're in a unique situation. That's where, um, yeah. you know, bridge funding or bridge loans or what an alternative for temporary funding where we would pay back within six six months or a year at the latest. Right. Okay. And you've, interesting. Okay. So you're a little later stage there. Well, congrats, though. It sounds like you're in a I mean, it's a problem, but a higher class problem, like, or later uh -huh. stage, I should say, right? <laughs> okay, cool. And, and you've been here before, I think, right? Nice to see yeah. you. Yeah, I, I sat in last month to listen in. I had questions and everything. Okay. And um, and so, yeah, if you have time, I wouldn't mind doing a quick pitch uh, okay. just to practice. All right. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I need to remember to leave time for pitches. Okay. Because you and Ulrich both want to do that. Okay. So now let me look, let me gather my thoughts here. Uh, let me just say hello to the folks in the chat room. Um, that's a uh, uh, busy chat room here. And if you're um, come checking in, we'd love to hear where you're from uh, in the chat room. Like, where are you to, in the world? Uh, and let me just check through and then we're going to get started with our uh, actual questions. So Kelsey, hi, Kelsey. Nice to see you. Um, Roderick McCarthy. Excellent. Oh, Roderick, were you at the, the event I hosted last week? Fantastic. Um, yeah, I hosted a big conference uh, here in Southern California. We had a couple hundred entrepreneurs. Actually, it was pretty amazing. We had almost, I think, more than 50% of the audience was investors. <laughs> so it was pretty pretty nice uh, environment for uh, my founder friends. Um, okay, E says hi. Uh, Pakshal, hello. Roxanne from Lake Forest. Okay, another neighbor. Ush Music from Toronto, hello. And uh Sayovush Mirza. Wow. Okay. That's, I'm sorry, my, whatever language that is, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at that, but welcome. Um, no, we'll do get to pitches later. I'll ask, I'll ask for folks to, um, you know, kind of raise their hand. So that's useful. We'll need other people to clear out backstage so you can do that though. Tony wants to talk about finding the right investor. Ali, how to find investors. Yep. How do you know when you're ready to pitch water wheel? That's a good question. Uh, Ethan, the, I'll put the link up again in a couple minutes with the backstage is full. Um, Getting into an incubator. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, da, 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 da. Michael. Hey, Michael. Nice to see you. And okay, I guess there's more here than I can handle for the moment. But I just want to see if there's anything urgent. There's another Toronto check-in. And hey, Philip. Nice to see you. And Utah. Hello, Jordan. And India. Ashish. And David from San Clemente. Gary from Irvine. And another Irvine. Okay, cool. All right. Um all right, so let's go. Now, looking at my notes, I'm thinking uh, just in the order of how we think about these things, right? We've got early, you know, pre pre seed, pre seed, uh, pro forma. Okay, so Eric with pro formas, Andrew with pro forma. Well, let's, Andrew, let's start with you. And then, Eric, let's go over and talk about pro formas. But let's get with the pre pre. So here's Andrew. All right. Okay, here's our friend Andrew. Hi, Andrew. So where, are you, where are you in the world? Herndon, Virginia. Okay. Right here in Dulles, yep. Yeah, right. Okay. I was in Dulles last week, <laughs> actually. It's uh, the air big airport outside of Washington, D.C., anybody, yep. if you don't know where that is. in a big airport. <laughs> Certainly a big one. Okay. So um, give us a little more context on your question, and we'll see what uh, I can offer. And everybody who's listening in the chat room, too, if you have suggestions for Andrew, please do chime in and let him know your ideas, because obviously there's a lot of expertise here. It's not all, it's not all here. It's all out there too. So please do share your ideas and, and again, uh, share on LinkedIn and connect each other and all that sort of thing. Okay, go ahead, Andrew. What do you got? 
So I was just I was curious about the pre pre seed, the very first stage of raising money mm -hmm. because I don't yet have a product, but in order to create that product, I would need some money to do research and whatnot into what that product is. Sure. And then obviously developing it and then moving on from there. What kind of product is it? Just roughly, you don't have to give us your it's secret sauce. A vehicle. I'm sorry. A vehicle. A vehicle. You mean, you mean a car, like a yeah. car, or a truck, like a yeah. heart, a big piece of metal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, and I ask because obviously it's different if it's software, which doesn't have all the material requirements, or if it's yeah. biotech, which might take you know years of FDA approvals and lab testing and so forth, mm -hmm. right? So, okay. So Andrew's talking about a hard hard tech, I guess you might call it. Anybody who has suggestions on this, I'm not an expert in this for sure. Uh, so please chime in and if you have advice for him. Uh, but my sense would be, well, do you have any expertise in this area? Are you an engineer or you worked for Ford or Tesla or something? I don't, but I have background in mechanics and whatnot. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, well, how much money are we talking about for the prototype? I wasn't really sure about that. I would, I know it has to be a big amount of money because I know a lot goes into researching different aspects of the car and obviously developing it. Yeah. But I think, I don't know, around to start, I would say $500,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's, there's two paths here. One is friends and family because they're the only ones that are going to believe you, right? Um, if you don't have a background in the industry and you don't you have degrees, and you don't have like a patent or something, as far as I know, um, unique, uh, frankly, nobody's going to believe you. Um, so the only people that might believe you is the friends and family, right? So if you can talk somebody into that because they know and love and trust, trust is what I'm really driving at here. They have some mm -hmm. trust in you, um, hopefully due to other things you've done or just that they really love you and they have extra half a million dollars sitting around. Um, that's the place to start, right? Um, unfortunately, I said there's two paths. That's one. The other path is basically a dead end, which is trying to raise money from investors. Unfortunately, and I, I'm as far as I know, I'm one of the few people that will say this. I don't think you have much of a chance at that. You need to redirect your life. And I'm saying this is your friend, right? Nobody invests in big ideas anymore. Um, everybody wants some kind of traction. There's just too many opportunities in the market and cash is just too liquid. Um, to invest in things that have essentially no proof points yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be harsh. I don't know you. Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's just too easy for me. Like you, you see the amount of business plans I get today, you know, every day, right? And as an investor, um, there's just a thousand places to put money, right? And, and that includes for a long time, one of the reasons the startups got so hot was because interest rates were at zero. So if I had say an extra half million dollars sitting around, I wouldn't put it in the bank because interest rates were zero. I would find someplace more interesting. And a lot of that was the stock market, which went crazy or crypto, which went even crazier or startups, right? But now even interest rates are several percent and it's starting to, so it's, it's sucking air out of the startup market. So for, and again, I'm not picking on you, but you asked, and I'm trying to be helpful by telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really going to believe you as far as I know. And again, you might have, you know, a black belt, you know, secret black belt in vehicle development that I don't know about. Right. But um, unless you have a bunch of connections or something that differentiates you, the idea is not enough. So I'm repeating myself, but I, so yeah. I, I would, so to be practical, I try to be constructive here. Um, I would try to find a job that gives you some of those expertise or connection, like see if you can get a job at Tesla or whatever the you know equivalent is for the niche that you're looking at. Um, make some friends, get a graduate degree in that stuff, like become a leader or at a minimum, if you can't change your lifestyle, go out online and hang out in every Reddit room and discussion board that talks about that stuff and make a name for yourself. Start a blog, start a podcast, be the guy for whatever this niche is. Um, mm -hmm. I talk a lot about this kind of thing in my second book, this one, E Riches 2.0. Like you can be an expert in anything these days because you can do what I'm doing. You just turn on the camera and start talking, right? And, and people will start to believe you if you make sense. Um, that's not an easy road or a short road, but I think it's probably more realistic than thinking that there's somebody out there waiting to do the kind of Cinderella thing of like, hey, I'm your fairy godmother. Here's money, right? Yeah. So do you uh, think, do you think, uh, getting multiple people to give you a smaller amount of money would be a better way to go. 
Oh, for sure. Yes. I'm sorry. I skipped right over that. That to me is obvious. That's a given. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you try to raise you know, it's half a million, you got 10 people at 50 each. Yeah. That's going to be a thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, much easier. Well, it depends on the person, I guess, right? If you have an uncle who's a billionaire, then he may not care 50 or 500, right? But uh, you know, those folks are few and far between and even they're inundated with proposals, right? The other yeah. angle for you might be something around crowdfunding, which is of course, you know, you put the idea up online and then get people to chip in smaller amounts. The problem with that, of course, you have to disclose pretty much everything you're doing, right? To yeah. get excited. So, um, so I wish I had better news, but that's kind of the idea. And please do look in the chat room um, and see if anybody uh, has, uh, okay, well, yeah, Jordan said that's crowdfunding and Philip said, totally agree with Scott. Um, Kyle, that's a good thought, Kyle. Um, why don't you focus on content creation to gain traction? That's kind of what I was saying, I guess, you know, be, mm -hmm. the, be the blogger in this space, right? And you yeah. can build a name and that doesn't even cost half a million dollars, right? You can put up a blog for basically nothing. Um, yeah, so this, oh, and Jay Michael, yeah, those are some nice uh, comments, guys. Um, so yeah, please uh, help Andrew out. And Andrew, I hope that's helpful. I'm going to move on here, but um, nice to meet you. Hope to see you again. Yeah. When you get to the next stage, happy to see you again. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Sure, nice to meet you. Okay, so that's the bad news, right? For folks who are tuning in here thinking that, um, you know, startups are easy money or it's easy to raise money. It's not. <laughs> it's, these are business decisions. Okay, Eric, do you want to come back and talk about pro formas? You've got your camera off, but if you are, there we go. Oh, there's a nice thought, Andrew. This is for you again in the chat room uh, from Philip. Join another startup with the same mission that's a bit ahead of you. That's a great idea, Philip. Right. If you can find somebody who's already done the work of kind of setting up the company, maybe you can get in as a, you know, a, a partner, you know, get a good chunk of stock and learn the ropes there um, or even just intern with them on the side or something if they're small enough. Right. But something to build your resume so that um, investors have more evidence that you're going to be the guy for this space. Cool. Okay, Eric, so uh, having trouble with pro formas was our question, right? Yeah, just, I mean, how would one create a, a, effectively a single page pro forma example having no no sales? And I mean, I, I mean, yeah. if you have a, you know, a workable prototype yeah. and you're, you're going to have to go to, I just, I mean, like I said, I can, I can draw pictures all day long and, you know, yeah. make a, make a step stool or whatever I'm making and then go, what do you think of this? But where do you get? information that you don't have yeah I, well this, this is the short answer and again this, this is the straight talk show here's the big secret you make it up <laughs> that's all there is i mean uh, i could talk about it for half an hour and give you specifics but that's the truth i mean you have no revenue you don't know what the adoption rate is or the churn or any of the factors right you're talking about an equation with i don't know five or eight variables and none of them you know right so um, the fact is investors aren't overly concerned with the pro formas at the early stage in terms of what they say. It's more that we want to see you know enough about business to show that you know how to write some, if that oh. makes sense. You know, okay. it's, it's like a checkbox. Like this person seems brilliant at this, but do they know anything about business, right? And and the, honestly, there's a bunch of services. I, I Nothing off the top of my head. Actually, the audience probably, can somebody put in the chat room? There are lots of business plan pro forma type tools online these days. Maybe somebody can put in the chat room some suggestions for each other because generating pro formas, even if you understand, even if you do know some of those numbers, like, you know, I've sold this much and this kind of gross margin and net margin and cost. If you can put that together, putting it into an official pro forma format is still a bit tricky if you're not an accountant. So regardless, even if you have the numbers, there are services that could help, um, could help you do that. But l let me give you a little more, a little more just so that I don't uh, leave you hanging there. Um, most early stage startups are valued very roughly speaking, at least in the software, you're a software company, right? I, yeah. I remember from last time. Okay. Um, you know, like something like 2 million to $4 million. Why? Because it's a nice round number. And if investors are going to give you money, they might give you, you know, at the pre-seed stage, they might give you 200 to $500,000 and they might want 10 to 15%. That's just kind of how it starts. And there's no real... Um, numbers to that. It's just, it, it's just what it is, right? Cause we're the, okay. You seem like a smart person. You've got a good plan. I like the idea. We want to give you, leave you enough of the stock that you're incentivized, but we want a decent chunk as it grows that we make our money back and then some, and that's kind of where it shakes out. So what you're going to do, frankly, is make up some numbers and compound a whole series of assumptions. Say, you know, we figure if we can sign this many people per month, 
uh, at this average ticket size with a gross margin of this. Then we take out our costs that are, you know, people and software and rent or insurance, whatever it is, you know, and that gets us a net margin of roughly this. And then we think we'll grow, yeah, like this much every month for the next three years. That's kind of what you're doing. If you're going to value it two to four million, let's mm -hmm. say three. Okay. How would you arrive at that if I was selling something for 20 bucks a copy? Um, then you do the reverse of what I just said. You, you X plus X times Y times Z equals 3 million. Fill in X, Y, and Z, right? At $20 is X. Uh, we need what? I don't know what it is, but you know, 10,000 of those, uh, 10,000 of those at 20 is uh, what? That's 2 million, right? So. Uh, and when you say 2 million, you mean 2 million per year? Whatever you think is appropriate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So 3 million a year would be the value. Well, sorry, no, you're right. You, I'm doing this too on the fly. That is an amount of revenue, right? So the valuation of the company is going to be some multiple of the revenue. So if you're doing two million a year, um, and say has 50% margin, so you got a million dollars a year of profit, which of course is a dream come true. Um, I don't know why you'd be raising money if you're doing a million profit <laughs> on your own, but okay. So you got a million dollars of profit. Um, then investors are going to look at comparables in the market, other companies like yours, or uh, do a discounted cash flow. There's a whole, I did a whole panel on this just on Tuesday about valuation. There's a lot, again, this is complex, right? Finance is a specialty. But anyway, just for rough purposes, you take a million dollars and you say, uh, we're going to do that every year for five years with some growth. We'll call the company worth seven and a half million dollars. I mean, super, super rough, right? And all the finance people in the Chat rooms are probably telling me to fuck off, right? <laughs> That's kind of the idea. You do so how much you're gonna make and then multiply that by something and you get a valuation. That's how it works. So for so you net out times X, net out times five years is gonna give you the value. Is that the idea? Yeah, something like that. Again, super rough, right? I'm throwing hand grenades here, right? This is not <laughs> detailed financial work, but th there's lots of videos I'm sure on YouTube about these kind of specifics, but that's the kind of the ballpark. You figure out what am I making or what do I hope to make? How fast is it going to grow? When do I become profitable? Hopefully. And then some multiple of that is what the company is actually worth. Cause the valuation remember is an exit value. That's what the company's worth when somebody buys it. Right? So they're thinking, okay, you're making a million a year. Okay. I could probably buy that, merge it in with my operations and add a million uh, so that might add like uh, over five years a you know, maybe eight million dollars to my bottom line i think you're worth eight million dollars that, that's kind of the the logic oh, so, okay so it's the the net out times an x amount of time is what the value of the company is okay that's, right. I, I, that's the thing i'm trying to say is that like i said i can build you a piece of furniture but i right. get to this part and i'm just right right yeah and, and people skip over that financial people tend to be down in the details which are crucially important again i'm way exaggerating the simplicity of this. But yeah, that's the concept. The company creates some value. Then you you forecast how much more value is going to create over time. And then you kind of look at the market and say, huh, other companies like this are of similar growth rates and they sold for this multiple, right? And this one sold for this multiple. So we could maybe estimate that we'll sell for something in between there. And like I said, if you're doing a million a year and other companies are selling one sold for eight and one sold for 12, maybe we can do a 10x. So a million a year times 10 is 10 million. And so they look at the million a year you're talking about as the net. Well, before you have any revenue, you, you got to just do it on revenue. Right? Sorry, before you have any profit, you have to do it on revenue. And before you have revenue, you just got to make it up. So it's all just compounded assumptions. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe it. Are you an engineer? Yeah, that's the hardest thing I can get. You know, like I said, I can yeah. do everything else. I don't remember. Do you have an engineering background or what's your background? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's this is, this is really hard. That's why I guessed that because this is really hard for engineering people to grasp that a lot of this is just bullshit. <laughs> really? Oh, that, oh, that, I, that I can do. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but let, let me give you the, uh, one more step. I'll, folks, tell me in the chat room if this is useful or I'm getting too in the weeds here. But this is the stuff nobody tells you, I think. That's why kind of why I do the show. What you're really doing is making up a bunch of numbers so that someone that you met at a cocktail party or a networking event or your cousin or whatever, they like you, like Andrew was saying. They already like you. They like your idea. They think it's cool. You have to feed them enough numbers that they can justify this to their partners. That's what you're doing, right? So if they like you, they're thinking, man, you know, I, I think this, uh, this guy, Eric, he's cool. This is a great idea. And, uh, you know, I know his projections are a little wonky, but I've looked at other stuff in the market. 
And then they go into their partner and say, I like this guy. He's doing this. Market looks like this. Here's some numbers that justify this. And they all think, huh, well, this guy's our partner. We trust him. He likes Eric. He trusts Eric. Okay. That's what you're doing. So it's all of this boils down to partner meetings where people uh, sit down and justify the things that they like already. That's my personal thesis, probably controversial, but that's how partnerships work. Same in your own house, right? You want to buy a new car, you go to your spouse and say, hey, you know, I want that new Tesla. You know, how much? Okay. <laughs> right? And you're like, well, I think it would be good, honey, because I can commute and I'll save money on the gas. And it's the same shit. So anyway. All right. So hopefully we beat that to death. I hope that's helpful. Um, yeah, thank you. Again, everybody online, you can. Um, OK. Oh, yeah. Let's look at the comments. Um, uh, uh, Pat says, good. Thank you, Pat. I am, I'm getting, uh, you're starting to see the big picture. Good. Thank you. That's helpful to know, Pat. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Philip says, uh, early performers do one thing. They demonstrate, you know, the parts of your business. That's right. That's kind of what I was saying. at the early part, right? Is that even if you don't know how to do performers, we want to know that you understand how the business works, right? These costs lead to these revenues lead to this much left over at the end. Like we want to know that you can take this widget and break it into all the costs of goods and how you know the parts move. And the reason that's important is because we want to know that if things go well or go badly, you know what to adjust. And that's part of what a pro forma is showing us, that you see all the inputs and the outputs and what deserves your attention, right? That, that's what investors are trying to see. Um, okay. All right. Well, I hope that was useful. You got me on a rant there. Um, but nice to see you again, Eric. I hope that's helpful. And uh, again, Eric off. Let's turn you off. There we go. Um, if you go on YouTube, there's tons of videos for this kind of stuff. Um, uh, lots of details. Um, Odin says, truth, decisions are based on emotional interest. Actions are justified by the data point. I think that's right. I'm going to try something here. Does that? Uh, no. I thought I could turn this. Huh. Oh, I know why. Hold on. Sorry. I'm just there. Yeah, cool. Isn't that cool? I love that this little tech I've got going here. This is a company called Restream, by the way. If anybody else is looking at doing their own show, it's cool. Um, okay, so uh, now I got myself lost. Hang on, <laughs> get too clever. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that's two intro questions, folks. Let me know if we're on the right track. And uh, let's see, Eric and Andrew left. Cool. Um, so that leaves a little more room backstage. I'm going to put on the, here's how you get backstage. People keep asking, but there wasn't room, so I didn't turn it on. Uh, now we're going to bring on, let's see, we did Eric and we did Andrew. Okay. Pre Alex, uh, did Roderick come back? He was having trouble with his connection. I still wasn't clear what he wanted to talk about. No, I don't see him. Okay. Um, Ulrich has a pitch, Patrick and Alex, I think you both kind of had similar questions. So why don't we have a group discussion here? Uh, Patrick and Alex, I think you both, um, oh, did Alex leave? Uh, I guess you, okay, well, all right, Patrick, it's me and you. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> nice to meet you. Good Where are you me. calling from? I'm calling from Glendale. Okay. That's yeah. right. You told me that earlier. Sorry. Okay. Um, sorry. Let me get the right drawn on here. Um, oh, man, I think these scroll bars so tiny. Jeez. There we go. All right. Oh, quick commercial. Have you liked and subscribed, guys? If this is helpful, please like and subscribe. This is being recorded. Don't say anything stupid. And this is not advice you should count on. You should talk to your own qualified counsel. And oh, there's my LinkedIn, just a quick commercial for that. If you want to say hi, please tell me who you are, though, because I get tons and tons of spam. And we're going to talk to Patrick here about, um, oh, let me put this one up. If you're watching these replays later, so these are archived on uh, YouTube and uh, in the podcast at Blog Talk Radio and on LinkedIn, too, I think. So if you're watching this later and you have a question, you can put in a comment and I or other folks will Try to help you out. That's the whole point of this. We're trying to help each other, right? This, this is a there's a big world, and there's still lots of opportunity for everyone. And there. Okay. All right, Patrick. Sorry for the delay. All right. So you want to talk about um, where's my notes? Raising money for in the prototype stage, right? Uh yes. Okay. That and I also had another kind of idea, um, but we could talk about that one first. 
Okay. So what's what frame the question for me? What would you specifically like to ask? Okay. Um, so I guess I'll I'll tell you what I'm working on first. So we're working on something that is a very, very new type of service. Uh it is an augmented reality social media service. So it's kind of like a 3D version of TikTok would be the best way that I could describe it. Um, we've been creating some really cool content with it uh, and seeing what other creators can make and, and distribute over the platform. Um, and, and we've got some very good signs on that. But what I'm trying to figure out is like we're very early stage. We're pre-launch right now. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how do you go about pitching something that is like pretty much a pure entertainment service to investors when it's not like a, a strict like business case, like we're solving this problem. It's more mm -hmm. like, yeah. know, here, for, here for enjoyment type of thing. Right. And it's not e-commerce. So you don't have like this number of units sold kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Um, well, it's not easy. You've already found that out, right? That's why you're here, presumably. Yeah, well, I'm just getting into it at the moment. Okay. We've got the prototype together. So, okay. Well, there's kind of two, uh, two ways. One is to think about, obviously, the business and how are you going to make money? And the other is the, the one that the media loves to cover, but really doesn't happen that often, which is, especially now, which is just to build it because it's going to be amazing and something will happen and we'll figure it out later, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, that works out sometimes, like with OpenAI or uh, early days of Facebook or even YouTube, right? There wasn't much monetization strategy behind those companies. These days, though, I think the bar is a little higher. You really need to think about the problem and solution, right? So being in LA, you have probably a more receptive audience to those kind of big picture entertainment driven pitches. Um, but most investors are not going to be interested until you have a business case for it, right? Um, so it may not be you know, a, a problem solution, like, you know, mm -hmm. the fixes this specific th business need and therefore we expect this kind of revenue. Right. Um, but entertainment is a, a legitimate category, obviously, right. Billions and millions of dollars. So I would be looking a lot at other startups and whatever financials you can find to model something like what you're doing. Right. Maybe mm -hmm. and this is going way back. But, you know, the early days of MySpace or something like, you know, and obviously you want to be way more current than that, like TikTok or something or Pinterest. You know, they weren't sure what it was going to happen. But eventually the dream is you build a big enough audience. You have advertisers come in. Right. So you probably need to have a clear lane for advertisers to participate in your in your product. Yeah. Or there's some kind of data mining. Right. Where you're taking all the information from folks and then packaging that and selling that somehow privacy laws have gotten a lot stricter and that will really hamper your growth in Europe because they have the GDPR, which is much more stringent privacy regulations mm -hmm. than we do here in the States. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what, how big an avenue that is. And Apple recently changed their, their privacy sort of regime as well. So I'm not, I just don't know, um, mm -hmm. but you can look, <laughs> you know, how much of that is still a lane for revenue generation. Um, and then there's, you know, is there an e-commerce angle to this? Like if everybody's in there hanging out, you know, can you sell t-shirts or can you, you know, get Nike to show up and, you know, sell the new dunks or whatever it is? Um, you know, how do you integrate that is a question. The problem with all of that though, is that that's like second and third order effects. You've got to build the tech, make sure it works. You've got to make sure people give a shit and show up. And if they use it on a recurring basis enough that they tell their friends and it grows, those are big hurdles, right? And mm -hmm. um, without a business case, it's going to be hard to raise money, um, f at least from traditional investors. So on the optimistic side, I would be doing like what I was saying earlier uh, at the beginning of the show. Um, we, we I, I don't know that we have a lot of entertainment investors in here, but this startup investors directory dot com. This is how you raise money today. You don't you don't just send out pitches to every VC or angel investor you meet. You do the research, yeah. first, right? Uh -huh. And find this is people. Another part. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. You, 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 I'm talking too much. Oh, uh, I was going to say. Um, so one of the things is like I've gotten together a. Uh, uh, I went through uh, Signal.nfx website mm -hmm. and uh, I was able to get through a very large list. I got about 200 people on it from like maybe a thousand profiles. It took like a week uh, about, and I've gotten it to a, a pretty targeted list of people that are like AR, VR, entertainment, P 
people that made sense like in our space. Good, good. Um, but I'm I'm lacking. I don't really have connections to many people or hardly anyone really. So that was the other part of my question is like if you don't if you don't have connections like into the industry, how do you get on the road to that, or how would you take the first steps towards that? Yeah. Right. So, okay. So you did a crucial thing there. And I just want to congratulate you doing the research first. That's how this works, right? There's just too many entrepreneurs and too many investors too, right? How do you ever find each other? Right. It's, it's really like dating, right? Your soul may, may be out there, but you know, she might live in Pittsburgh and you live in LA. What, how are you ever going to find each other? Right. Uh -huh. And this is the same vibe. So doing the research first is the key. So everybody listening, what he said is the right idea. He went and looked first at investors who are already active in AR and VR and his niche. Right. OK, so presuming you do that. And that's why I've got this offer on the screen uh, there. <laughs> um, it's because we built this tool to try to help you do this, especially if you're not in L.A. Like you're he's actually in the right place. Right. He's building an entertainment related thing in Hollywood. So he's ahead of the game um, more than a lot of people. Um, so how do you make contact? Well, it's really hard. And because the Internet makes it so easy and cheap to reach investors, we're, all of us get deluged, right? So I actually recommend, well, there's two things. One is old school. You go to events, you meet people, you shake hands, you look them in the eye, and you build a relationship. And that is how this works, especially at the angel level, because this is personal money, right? Like I don't have a fund. I don't have some big insurance company or university endowment backing me, right? I write checks out of my personal checking account, right? Mm -hmm. And that means I have to really like you, right? Like for a long time, right? This is like dating more like marriage, honestly, right? Companies right. that I've invested in, you know, we're five years in on a lot of them and they're at the end is nowhere in, in sight, right? And we got to still want to hang out and have a beer because, you know, these have got to be friends of yours, right? And that doesn't yeah. happen easily over email um, or Zoom, although it's better over Zoom than email. Um, <laughs> right. So, the the next step if you don't have that especially those of you and again i do this show a lot for people who are not in a big city like like um, uh like patrick here and you know the books and stuff are all for all over the world so if you're in bangalore or you're in um uh, boise idaho or wherever it is uh you have to do this online right so again that's kind of why we built the startup investors directory because the only other thing you can do is what you've done patrick so this is kudos to you is you go and find people that are already interested and you really got to research them and i hate to say it but it's kind of like stalking right you have to know enough about them to send them an email that they want to read right and it can't be a you know some unabomber treaties you know in <laughs> 14 pages it's got to be concise and just like hey patrick you know i see you know whatever you went to uh you know, Ohio State University, so did I, you know, and how about the football team? And I see that you invest in companies like this and we've got this and this is a really crappy example. Right. But you've got to personalize it in a non stalkery way. And that's hard to do. Um, but like follow them on LinkedIn, comment on their stuff, make friends. And this is really my thesis. And I'm glad you asked the question, because the old way was like, just hit every investor you could. These days you want to boil that list down. Yeah. You said you had 200. That's yeah. awesome. Try to boil it down to like 25. Mm -hmm make friends and i don't care how you do it send them flowers right um you know don't be creepy but, but, but you know like let them know this is a person who really gets the space that you're investing in and i've researched your portfolio and i see that you're on the board of this and it looks like you had an exit over there congratulations do you want more deals like that one you know and like try to get in their head about like um i'm i'm your next ticket right yeah, this so, was uh, so when I was going through the list, I guess this this bounces off of that. We I took you know got through all the people first, but then uh, went to uh, back through the list and uh, took note of like the individual companies that they had invested in, and like this exactly. was why I want to reach out that type of thing. Um, uh -huh. And maybe it needs to be more personal than that, but I felt like that was a start. So yes. No, that's exactly the right idea. And, they, and I'm not trying to beat this up too much, but but that's what this is for. We put we, this has their um, portfolio companies mm -hmm. and uh, their past investments. And we're trying to and it's still in beta, right? It's not like complete. It's not magic, <laughs> but but like that's the kind of tools you are doing the right stuff. That's I guess I could have said that and we would have shorter conversations. So to, that's to, to get off of that, it's like basically from from that step, would it be the next is like to just start? to maybe email those folks? 
Yeah. Okay. Or comment on LinkedIn, some, something friendly, right? Mm -hmm. Don't, don't scare them. Right. But um, this is one of my other big things is investors. It's just like dating, right? Well, maybe harder than dating in some ways. You're not going to close the deal on the first date or the first contact or by email, right? It's going to take a series of contacts so that they can see a pattern of you being a reasonable person who's got a great idea and seems capable to execute and just needs the kind of help they can provide. That's a, that's a four step outline there I just made up, right? <laughs> but you, 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 know, you got to be investable. That's what Paul Graham says right. from Y Combinator. What's the, what's the secret? You got to look like a good deal, right? Yeah, so um, that takes some time. It's not going to happen in one email or one beer or one anything, right? Um, so again, I would double down on who are the couple dozen really likely targets yeah. And then try to work your way into their lives without being a creep. Okay, cool. Well, that, that, that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope that's helpful to everybody. We spent a little bit of time on that. We got to move on here. But nice to meet yeah, you. Nice to meet uh, you. Good. Good luck. Hope to see you again. And and you and everybody else, when you see this stuff on LinkedIn, I'd love it if you could just like and share, and then we get more people here and help more people. That's that's the concept. So thanks, Patrick. Okay. So. Um, all right, so that was our friend Patrick. Hopefully that was helpful to those of you who are listening. Uh, we're going to do some pitches. Man, it's almost been an hour already. Uh, okay, we got to move a little faster here. So who's still waiting in the chat room? Let's see. We did Eric. Randy's there, and Jason's there, and well, we have a bunch of new folks too. Okay. Um, all right, let's do – let me just breeze through the chat room for a minute, and then Jason, let's talk to you, and then Randy, and then we'll let the new folks. Um, let me just see what's going on in the chat room in case I missed anything uh, urgent. Sometimes I do this and people are like, hey, your microphone isn't on. <laughs> um, okay. Da, da, da. Uh, uh, go to Upwork. Yeah, Upwork is a great resource to find people, uh, the freelancers and almost anything. Uh, let's see. Yeah, how do you turn the mic and webcam on? And Sayavesh, I'm waiting. Yes, the chat room is full right now. There's a you're in the chat room because you can see you on the screen. That's the chat room. The video chat has room for ten people backstage, and it's full right now. So, um, bit traffic. Your comments did appear on the screen, as far as I can tell. So, welcome. The cold start problem. Thank you, Philip. That's a good resource. Yes, there's a book about this, um, and also zero to one. There are books that can help you think about how to get from nothing to something. And that's the critical problem these days. Investors just really aren't that interested in ideas anymore. There's just too many ideas. Ideas are too easy. Uh, you need to show up with some traction. And traction means some demonstration of success or progress, at least. And the best traction, of course, is profits. Uh, but at the seed stage, the pre-seed stage, you probably don't have profits or the prototype stage. So you need to figure out some other way to show to us that you are making progress. You have some kind of adoption, some kind of interest from customers. Uh, we're going to talk to Randy about that in a couple of minutes because he has, a, as I think he said, he has like letters of intent or some deals already signed. And he wants, how do you turn that into money, right? Because he's at the next stage. Um, um, let's see. Okay, so, okay. Sayavish, that's a good question. Uh, let me get back to that, though. We've got people waiting backstage. So I said next was going to be Jason. Let's bring Jason back here. Jason, are you still awake, Jason? Sorry, yep. I took a while. I'm here. Okay, there. Cool. Nice to meet you. Where are you today? I'm in Detroit. Not Detroit. I'm from Detroit. Did you know oh, that? I did not. Whereabouts? Yeah. I grew up in the city. I went to Cass Tech High School. Oh, wow. Downtown. Very cool. Yeah. How about you? Uh, St. Clair Shores. I did go to public school in Detroit, but uh, graduated from North and Lapeer. But I'm back in St. Clair Shores now. So, okay, excellent. Um, excellent. Oh, go blue. Yeah, that's my. Uh, I've got a Michigan flag right there. You can't quite see it. There you go. It's a big <laughs> fight over here, Michigan, Michigan State. But everybody hates Ohio State, though. So that's right. I know. I used them in an example a minute ago, and I almost bit my tongue. Oh, it's like bad. Bad example. <laughs> anyway, well, nice to meet you. So what's, uh, you have B2B Marketplace and what was the rest of it? So here's where I'm at. I, I, I have, uh, I worked backwards from like a series A situation. I'm a non-technical sole founder. Um, I, I raised my initial pre-seed round through uh, friends and family. Basically, they're all existing customers of mine. I own a gym locally. So I put it all together. It's an angel list. I have like the growth hypothesis, the value hypothesis, like all that stuff. I have a pretty good story. And my initial investors, uh, co-founders being onboarded, and I have um, a pro bono attorney that's putting together all the paperwork to make it 
um, you know, above board. So it's attractive to investors down the road, but Good. because it's a network and the, the, the value itself is growing the network. What is there, what kind of value proposition do I have um, as I'm talking to them that is compelling to them? I have a clear cap table. Uh, I'm raising my, this round at a 20% discount. What do they want to see um, for their investment when I'm doing a, a slow lean startup uh, if I don't have any money? Uh, regard So regardless of how much funding I have, I have a path to you know, the series A and the exits and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And it's hard, especially with marketplaces. Just give me a little more context. Is this gym related or fitness related? It's um, Think of it as a uh, gym quality management certification that is designed to look like a, a wellness program for small businesses. And it'll end up as a national advertising campaign for the gyms in this network. So Interesting. if you go to join a gym, you're like, I don't know if that's a good gym. And if you don't know, you don't know. But if it's certified right. through this company, then you'll have peace of mind knowing that they have your best interests. So Interesting. That's clever. Okay. And it's, it's software then, right? Well, the, I mean, the, the, the value is the network. The network is the business. Yes, it's a software. So it's not cutting edge technology. It's a marketplace right. built on a lot of specific knowledge. Um that I, you know, gained over the last 15 years owning a gym. So. Yeah. Okay. Let me get my thoughts in order on that. You said cap table though. So let me just remind people we've got a great sponsor cake equity. doesn't sound like Jason needs it. But your attorneys might actually, this makes their lives a lot easier too. So managing cap tables, a pain in the butt uh, as you go, but um, that's a great service that uh, we definitely endorse. I'm an investor in the company. I literally endorse it. Um, okay. So uh, just a couple quick other housekeeping questions. So is your company, are you incorporated? What kind of business structure do you have? It's a Delaware C. Um, uh, we incorporated in AngelList. So that was uh, done in January. And then okay. we did our initial uh, fundraising. We tried to do a roll-up vehicle, but uh, ended up just taking direct investments. So they all signed their safes. Um, we, we have the uh, minimum viable product kind of parameters that um, need to get started. Um, uh -huh. But again, because the initial product is not to charge because the, the value is in the network. Um, yeah. Okay. What do you, you. you want to hear as somebody that I, I'm going to tell you there's not going to be revenue or profit initially until we grow the network to uh, you know, a particular right. size? And who's the customer? When, when you do get to size, who's actually writing, who's paying for something? Uh, the, the gyms will pay a fee based on how many uh, members... Uh, of the network are members of their gym. And then the small businesses that are participating will pay a minimal software as a service to be a part of it. Very like a small fee that you would use for. Okay. And so it's recurring monthly billing sort of thing. Yep. At least part on both sides. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So the question is how do you take that when the, the audience hasn't grown to the point where it's generating revenue and make it attractive to investors? Correct. Okay. Okay, so everybody in the audience, please uh, suggest ideas for Jason because I'll have some, but I only have a few and, and they're probably not good. Uh, but here's what I got. So the challenge he's facing what a lot of you are facing, right, is the cold start problem that we just talked about in a different context there with Patrick. Um, networks are particularly hard because you need both sides to agree and it doesn't happen until you get to some certain level where there's enough people to sustain it, especially for recurring revenues. You need a whole bunch of people to keep interacting. Um, so. How do you make that attractive? Well, you know, it's a chicken and egg thing, right? So, and you're a smart guy, obviously you've done, and by the way, he's done all the right things. I just wanted to highlight that. That's why I asked some of these other context questions. If you're going to set up a company these days, it needs to be a Delaware C Corp. That's the standard for venture investment. If you're going to do a thing where you open a barbershop with your buddies, that, that can be an LLC or whatever you want, right? But if you want to raise money, the industry has standardized on a Delaware C Corporation. So that is what you should do or your attorneys should do. Um, also, they're paying attention to their cap table, <laughs> which is good. And I mentioned cake equity. So, okay. And he raised friends and family through AngelList. If you are not using AngelList, that's also a great service. Mm -hmm. I've done some deals through there. They provide a lot of uh, tools that can help early stage companies. Okay. So now to the answer. Um, so you've got this chicken and egg situation. The trick is to demonstrate some kind of traction. These days, uh, I don't think 
I'll just speak for myself or and for most of the angel groups that I'm involved in, we probably wouldn't look at a deal like yours because there's no we just it's the same thing. And I'm just going to tell you the truth. It's too far down the road. Right. If and when it happens, it sounds great. But there's a lot of if and wins in the world. And um, we would want to see something. So let's talk about what the something would be, uh, at least to get to the screening. Right. So the something would probably be if you don't have any revenue and no immediate path to revenue, like in the next you know month or something, um, would be demonstrations of traction. And I'm glad you asked this because this is useful, I think, probably to everybody that's listening. What investors want to see these days is traction. And that's a mysterious word. We often get a, the question, what does traction mean, right? Um, and traction means demonstration of progress, demonstration of growth, demonstration of adoption. In other words, that something is happening. So what I would be doing if I were you, I think, is to try to demonstrate that this works and that it would scale and separate those as two separate things. You're thinking big and you're thinking about when it scales. And I, I've done this myself. I, I, I really do understand what you do. I built several marketplaces, some worked, some didn't. Um, and it's easy to see the vision once it works, right? Mm -hmm. but it's kind of like you're trying to build major league baseball, but you don't have the whole league right, yet, right? And you don't have all those stadiums around the country. So you got to start playing locally, right? You got to have some games here with your crosstown rival, Michigan, Michigan State, right? Yeah. Or something local, right? Um, and whatever that is to demonstrate something locally. So I would be, um, yeah, the initial, the initial plan is a, is a lean startup with, uh, five, okay. five of our initial customers. And then those customers already have the small business customers that they have in their gyms. That will be the, like the test pilot for the build measure test phase. So if I'm, uh -huh. if I'm somebody like, a um, like a Bill Gurley uh, or one of those investors that specifically says we need more marketplaces built on uh, existing businesses, do they want to see just a simple uh, projection spreadsheet in addition to the lean startup no. information? Well, we'll put it this way. The more you've got, the better, yeah, right? Yeah. So investors, in, investors eat numbers. So whatever numbers you got, that's good, right? And the more numbers, as long as they're accurate, um, are better. So if you've, uh, and let me call out something real quick. You just said something really important. Everybody, you know, Jason's identified a specific investor who likes this idea. That is key. My main advice to you, Jason, regardless of whatever I say, is make sure you make friends with Bill Gurley, right? You should be on LinkedIn commenting on his stuff, figuring out who his staff, I mean, he's a big guy, yeah, right? yeah. So he's got a staff partners and everything like make it's benchmark, right? Is he benchmark? Stuff? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Make, make friends with the firm, right? I mean, that's a better use of your time than many of the other things that you might be thinking about. And this is true for everybody, for Patrick and other folks, figure out, you know, if you can find some investors, I mean, there are some investors who literally say, I wish people would do more of this. I would invest in it. So do it yeah. right? and tell them. But the key is tell them you're doing it. So many entrepreneurs fall into this pit of like, I'm going to build this amazing thing and then I'm going to show up and give it to them and they're going to invest. It's like, no, it's not a Hollywood movie premiere, right? This is, you got to build a relationship. So as soon as you start building it, let them know. Then when you sign your first customer, let them know. And then when you sign another, let them know, right? Like build the, the, the data points so that, you know, when you're ready, you know, it's been whatever, 12 months and you say, Hey, it's me again. Are you interested? And they're like, Oh, this is that guy. Yeah. Eh, we'll have right so anyway i just wanted to i'm commending you there because if you've got somebody identified that's the key to this game these days so all right so your plan sounds good that's the kind of thing i was going to say okay start small um some initial customers um just prove your model right and even if it's only one customer that's infinitely more than zero and five is five times better right so keep going right um and hell if it works out you might start making some money and that's the best proof point right, right. um let me, let me give you a couple more that I was going to say, because it sounds like you're ahead of this, but just for everybody else watching. The other thing you can do, and this is like a $100 plan, right? Whatever it is you're selling or, or thinking about, just buy some Google ads or LinkedIn ads that say more cleverly than this, but say, you know, we're offering this and see who clicks. Right. Right. See if anybody clicks. Right. And then you can at least you have something. Right. And then you can go to an investor and say, hey, we spent $100 and 14 people showed up and said they would buy. Well, okay. That's at least something. It's way better than I have this idea that when it grows to scale three years from now, it'll be worth a billion dollars. Like, yeah, sure you do, kid. Yeah. Right. But anything is better than nothing. So um, anyway, I am hopefully validating. It sounds like you're on the right track. Okay. Is that specific enough or useful? Yeah, no, it's good. Um, I 
think uh, as long as um, I'm on the right path, I mean, I'm talking to many, as many people as I can. And um, if you're an angel investor and you have no idea who I am, you're not going to put your money behind something unless there's tangible evidence. But, um, you know, that's right. Uh, so I'm just I guess I'm confirming my um, kind of road that I'm on right now. So I appreciate the the feedback. I think that's right. And let me let me uh, respond to two things. One is um, you said I'm talking to as many investors as I can. Don't do that. That's wrong. Don't talk to as many investors as you can. I'm saying stop doing that. Everybody stop talking to as many investors as you can. Find the 25 investors you should be talking to that, and spend the time building relationships with those 25. That will get you to money much faster than talking to 300 investors a little bit every now and then every three weeks, you'll click like on their LinkedIn post, right? right. Double down, deeper, not broader. And then the other one was, yeah, baby steps. So on this part, I'm agreeing. Um, whatever you can do, initial traction and track everything. That's the other thing. As you're doing it, write down what your baseline was. I mean, it's easy when it's zero, right? right. <laughs> but once you start moving, you know, track it all. And then you can put some cool graphs in your deck, right? So, you know, we our growth is going like this, right? And based on real numbers, not made up. Um, and, and track that and figure out what the little um, proof points are that you can provide. That's, that's what traction means. All right. Cool. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. That was our friend Jason. Hope to see you again. Please go like and subscribe and all that stuff. All right. We're after one o'clock already. I mean, we're going to talk to Randy. We're going to do a couple of pitches and I'm way behind on the chats. I know Randy's been very patient here. Where's Randy? Okay. There he is. Okay. Uh, sorry, Randy. Just give me a sec here. Let me just review what people are saying here. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. What is that? Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, Patrick, you're welcome, Patrick. If you've got to go, nice to meet you. And here comes Randy. Uh oh, oh what's that? Terrible feedback. Okay. Is that me or you? Can am I okay? Sounds okay to me. I think it was you, Randy. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna bring you back. Yeah, are other people hearing that? Somebody say something in the chat room. I Yes, Elric's nodding. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Randy. I don't. Sorry, you've been waiting for like an hour. I don't, maybe. Uh, maybe you can uh, mute and unmute or reconnect your microphone or something. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. That's that's. Uh, I hope nobody's listening with headphones. I could have broken an eardrum. Okay. Um, okay. Well, let me hit the chat room here while Randy. Uh, Randy reboots his microphone. Okay, so um, at the die, Utah, Santa Ana, Netherlands. Hello, Netherlands. Um, okay, let's see. J. Michael says, yeah, that was good advice. Sorry, I'm just reviewing the chat room. You guys can do this too on YouTube later. By the way, you're, hopefully you're helping and saying hello and LinkedIning on um, in the chat room. If you want to review that, you could watch the replay on YouTube, you know, and you can stutter through there and see people's information if you'd like. Um, okay. Oh, Kyle's from Detroit. Cool. Um, yeah. See if you can help each other out. Uh, yes. Sorry, this is the boring part of the show where I do a lot of reading. I can't read it all back to you. You guys have been reading and I haven't. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that. Truth. Yeah, truth. Customers, yeah, good questions there. St. Clair Shores. Oh, that's you. <laughs> that's you, Jason. Okay, I'm guessing. Uh-huh. Uh okay, Abhinub, your question. So Abhinub asked, I think we covered a bunch of this, Abhinub. So uh, I have a tech product. So you have the demo. Um, Sass and I, how do I reach the early adopters, raise the funds? We've talked a lot about the fundraising. I don't know when you joined the show, but you can rewind uh, on the replay, I think. Um, reaching early adopters is a different question and an interesting one. I think my short answer to that would be, gosh, I don't have a great one. How about Reddit, right? I mean, if you can find a group of Redditors that, that are into that, um, or find all the blogs that cover this or podcasts, it's, it's about relationships and early adopters are key. They're your beta testers, your biggest fans. Um, crowdfunding can work also, but that's chicken and egg. You already kind of have to have an audience to succeed with crowdfunding, but there, it is a platform for reaching a lot of people. And of course you can podcast and create your own YouTube series, uh, TikToks, you know, all that kind of social stuff. But if anybody has ideas about that, it's a good topic. I'm unfortunately, I don't think we have a lot of time to, to address, um, the early adopter thing there. Um, 
let's see. Uh, Suvish. Yeah, that's a good question, Suvish. I think you went backstage. Oh, no. It looks like you left. Okay. Fine. We're running out of time here. Okay. Okay. Oh, Roxanne, let me address this one real quick, too. Randy, and then I'm coming. Well, actually, hold on. Let's see if Randy's mic is working. Hello, testing. Can you hear me? There we go. Yeah, way better. I'm okay. usually stuck okay. the microphone on another uh, machine over there, so I have to turn that way to look. But Excellent. Okay. All right. Hang on. Let me just answer this question with for Roxanne. So Roxanne says, is successful crowdfunding on Kickstarter an effective way to show traction with investors? Uh, it's not the best one, but it's way more than zero. So referencing the conversation I just had with Jason, no traction is zero traction, right? So something is way better than nothing. So if you can show, sorry, Brandon, it's probably distracting. Um, so if you, if you can show that somebody cares about what you're doing, that's really, really good. So if you can get on Kickstarter or uh, WeFunder or in, you know, uh, all those equity platforms or, or uh, sorry, even the, the crowdfunding gift sort of platforms, donation platforms, uh, that demonstrates something. And that's the piece that, again, a lot of entrepreneurs miss is they kind of build in secret and then they think they can unveil this magical thing and people are going to want to invest. And it's much better to build sort of in public and get people involved and interested. And crowdfunding is a good way to do that. Um, it does take a lot of time, though. I wouldn't underestimate it, right? So I would figure out if that's the best way for you to show early traction. That is a question for another day, I suppose. Okay, now we're the very patient Mr. Randy. Okay, all right, Randy. Thank you. So bridge funding. What, what's your, uh, can you reframe the question for everybody? Okay, um, we've spent a year and a half development. We're a go-to market now and we have customers, but the uh, sales cycle is taking 30 uh, for payment, 30 days or more. Um, one of our clients we acquired this month, you know, their estimate payment is next month. Uh, for, our, for our software, we're a B2B model. And so I'm looking for and uh, anticipating that, that that's going to go on. Um, I'd like to get a bridge loan. I don't want to give up equity now for something that I think will be generating more revenue uh, later. And later, of course, we'll go for equity. I mean, for um, uh, investment. But this stage, so I'd like your input for for um, my thoughts was, you know, we're looking only for like something like 40,000, 40,000, 20,000 uh, for lending would you consider something like in the marketplace, what, 20% interest or, or what is something um, for, um, for, yeah, a long, uh, for a, right. reasonable interest rates? Yeah, yeah, terms of six months to one year. Uh, right. Well, I'll, I'll start with, I don't know much about loans. Okay. I'm an equity guy, more VC, but I, I'm a business guy as well. So I'll tell you what, I'll help, help as much as I can anyway. Um, First of all, I think it's interesting that you're looking for a loan. And so let's just make that distinction clear for everybody watching. So a loan means you have to pay it back, right? right? But the person doesn't, I know you know this, no, I'm just okay. telling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the equ equity means you give a part of your company, but if the company goes under, you don't have to pay it back, right? So these are two separate things. So Randy's thinking they've already got a business rolling. They don't want to give away any more ownership because it looks like it might work. Right. So they're just going to get a loan. Essentially, like you're putting the thing on, the company is mm -hmm. going to, like use his credit card for 50 grand right. or something, right? So um, so that's that's a good tool to use. And frankly, the uh, early stage investing world talks way too much about equity uh, because we investors like to own pieces. But the real world actually runs on loans. That's the traditional way of funding everything, right? That's why there are banks on every corner, or at least there used to be. Yeah. Uh, banks make loans, and that's how biz most businesses run because they are real businesses that sell real stuff. And if they sell more donuts, they can get a bigger loan and they open another store, right? That's the traditional model. So Randy's being smart here. He's already got a company running in this new space of software and tech and stuff, but he wants to show a lender that, hey, I'm I, pretty good to pay this back. So can I just have a loan instead of giving up a piece of the company and I'll pay you back out of profits? So, okay, sorry, Randy. No, that no, was that's just good, that's answer. good everybody on the same page. So, okay. So lending is a good tool and I would encourage that. Um, my question with 20% sounds really high to me, but I, I'm not in that market, but you know, just as a number, but rates have come up, right? So it's, it's not, it's certainly going to be 10 or more. So we're in there, I'm not sure, but it's not, it's not like five, like it would have been a couple of years yeah. ago. The trick with loans, I think, is that in the limited experience I have is that um, you want to have a relationship with a local banker so they really understand you. Like, do you, would you make this a personal loan or is a company loan? Yeah, it would have to be a company. The, here's what's happened. My situation's unique. Three years ago, I was hit by a car 
and that uh, on my bicycle so that prevented me to have income and and what i had to do was what well, i had an in, i had income property and i had to sell it but to protect it i had to go uh bankruptcy you know just so i can sell it. so now uh, when i went for a loan a traditional loan for for my sure. company got approved which they said was the hardest part but i didn't because i still have that bk for three years on my record even though i brought my credit rating up they said okay. that one stain uh, makes it sure. makes it hard harder for me so yeah um, so i have this stain on my side the company got approved for 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 um for lending but i still need um additional so that's where i looked at it well maybe i have to go to hard money and that's where i thought okay 20 percent uh, as opposed to because right. okay yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And when he, when he says hard money, he means like maybe a non-bank lender, like somebody, just a wealthy person or a loan shark <laughs> cash and is going to loan you, but at a really high interest right. rate, but they're going to take the risk because unfortunately, Randy looks like a bad risk because of this accident yeah. and the ensuing bankruptcy. So, okay. So, okay. So you, um, have you, so my other big question is, have you looked at, at, um, loans and government grants and and things like that because there are a lot of lending programs emerging literally like this month because of the huge uh, president biden passed this huge inflation reduction act and there's all kinds of new programs that are targeting different niches like um so if you're like where are you geographically uh, uh, my, my company is in downtown long beach i'm in belmont shore we're a uh, c corp delaware um, so, okay. so we're geared for that. I've looked into some of the grant and grantify, or um, I forgot some of the other uh, things. But what's happening is we're losing opportunity now. Where I need to. I'm wearing too many hats, and so yeah. I'm doing this. Te- I'm doing the tech. I'm doing the sales, and um, there's so many events going on. L- last weekend, I was at Carlsbad Wine Fest. Well, our client invited me down there, and using my <laughs> software. Um, typically, what happens in sales in in Wine Fest, as soon as a person leaves. The, the counter, so does your opportunity to close that deal. Um, mm-hmm. Using my software and or marketing, we basically got 18 hard uh, leads and two of them converted to sales. That's never right. happened before. Right, right. Uh, and so that proved my concept as far as what we're, how you should go about uh, marketing and using our platform. We, and, and so anyways, sorry, um, your question, um, I forgot. Grants and loans, for, well, it's targeted loans. So if you're in Long Beach, there's a lot of money coming in general, and Long Beach is a distressed or whatever the word yeah. is community, right? Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's some money there that wasn't there a year ago, uh, and that would be worth a visit. Uh, the mayor of Long Beach is particularly excited about uh, startups. Um, and have you run into the Long Beach Accelerator well, yet? I'm going, uh, funny story, I'm actually going to, tomorrow to one of the accelerators, and I just participated in a pitch fest, right? Now, here's the bad thing. I'm old. I've been seasoned. I've done a lot of development. And one of the judges was a person that I refused to work with years ago. And because, and this is where non-transparency, he, he didn't he didn't disclose this. I came up and said that later. You know, he should have at least came up and said, for transparency, I can be unbiased. Um, I know him from the past and blah, yeah. blah, blah. But right. in this case, and so of course, and his sheet was the one that marked me the lowest. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah, that's okay. Well, Long Beach Accelerator, if, if you don't know them, the director is Andrea White Kios. She's a friend of mine. You talk to Long Beach Accelerator. They've got all kinds of stuff going on. And um, I don't know that this addresses your specific question about a bridge loan. Um, or temporary funding. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they're, they're pretty sharp and, and doing a lot of, a lot of good work. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, that's about all I got, I guess. But, you know, the, honestly, that's, a, since you're in a, in a city that's, that I kind of know yeah. that that's a huge tip. If you haven't go get involved and go to their events, uh, the board, I know some of the board members there, they're doing really good work okay. and they'd probably be excited to meet you. Okay. So let's we'll start with that. Thank you. May, <laughs> may I ask you, did you say her last name, Andrea? How, how would you spell? It's white, Andrea white dash. K J O S S. I'm not even sure how to say it. Joss, Joss, <laughs> something like that. A-A-S-S. Okay, yeah. thank you, thank you. You can find them online though, pretty easily. Cool. Well, nice to see you again. Good luck with everything. Thank you. All right. Okay, so now we have the long-suffering Ulrich is going to do a pitch. And uh, hold on, let's just check in here with Mr. Ethan. Are you? You want to tell me what you, what's on your mind today? Do you want to come on camera? Let's. I'm going to turn you on. Just see. 
Hey there. Nice to meet you. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yes. Nice, where, nice. So, where are you in the world? I'm in Toronto, Canada. Okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. So, yeah, basically, I just wanted a kind of so give a brief rundown of what I'm basically no, doing. No, hold so, on. No, 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 uh, I don't want all that. Just do you, what's your question? Just the topic, and then I'll try to work it in. The topic is basically is my company basically investable? Okay, that's a great topic. Uh, Happy yeah. to do that. I want to let me come back to you because Ulrich's been waiting. Uh, we can do that, and that'll probably be of interest to other folks. Are you investable? That's that's a good general topic, and we'll close the show with that. But Ulrich has been waiting, uh, and uh, he wanted to just tell us about his company a little bit. And generally, we do pitch practice here, and we could probably do one more if somebody else wants to join us. Um, but we do like a two minute thing. So not too long, just the, you know, the top level. And we're not going to do slides. And the idea is to give feedback. So I'm going to give feedback, whatever questions you might have. But also those of you in the chat room, please be constructive and suggest. Usually the, the most helpful is like what he didn't say. You know, like if he left something out that you thought was really important, that can be very valuable feedback because two minutes under pressure is really hard. He can't cover everything. Right. Because this is probably his life. Right. So, so we'll do the quick version and then we'll give him some feedback and hopefully that's helpful. Mm -hmm. So, Ulrich, where, where are you? I, I don't think we've met before. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I'm in Berlin. Oh, okay. And what I have, I have already said at the beginning and written in the chat, uh, namely, I promise I have a very strong brand for an investor that is interested in challenging the established online service providers like the booking.com airbnb.com challenge means to compete against with similar service with a similar device mm -hmm. i have the solution and it's a very powerful brand the features of this brand is that it's extremely bespoke, like booking.com is a bespoke type of brand. I am at least as good as this. Plus, what others do not have, what makes it really unique is that I have a very unique way to present the brand. And this I can prove. I'm interested in either bringing to realization that what I said, namely to establish such a marketplace or service provider, call it whatever you want, of the kind like Booking.com is and Airbnb is, just very similar, which is very generic, or to sell the majority or the whole thing to the investor. Thank you. This is uh, it. That's my pitch. And uh, of course, I'd also like to know from you uh, if the pitch is any interesting. And if it is, actually, if I can turn you around, I'll be uh, very happy to continue uh, giving you more details then, Scott. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, first of all, thanks for staying up late in Berlin. You're, it's it's uh, pretty late there. <laughs> so thank you for sticking around. Um, so it sounds interesting. Unfortunately, I, that didn't give me enough to know, right? Um, so I don't know what you mean by brand. Um, brand can mean lots of things. So um, if you're going to pitch this, I would suggest you explain in more detail what that means. Like, does it mean you own a domain name or have you built a website? Is there any money? Who are the target customers? Like, we would need to know a lot more. Um, and another quick one, the word bespoke is very common in the UK and European English, Americans don't use that word. We say custom. So just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's my impression. I was in the UK last week, so I think I know that. But uh, other folks, you can disagree with me. But uh, you, you make more sense to Americans if you say custom cust or customized, personalized, something like that. Okay, so what do you mean by brand? Just, just do the quick version. Is it a domain name or what, what is it? Yes, it is. It is everything what comes to your mind. It is a domain name, URL. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what it is. It's not a secret at all. It's B-O-O-Q-R, booker.com. Uh -huh. okay. And so it's that, and it's a patented, it's a protected brand name like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, oh. Amazon is. I think you mean trademarked. Trademarked. Correct. Okay. A trademark would be a synonym. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I have that. And more than this, there is a very innovative, unique concept about this 
let's call it trademark. If you think about the Coca-Cola trademark, mm -hmm. think about how Coca-Cola could animate the string of letters, C, O, C, A, et cetera, mm -hmm. animate. Animated logos are very uncommon or non-existent. And I found a very, very unique and uh, creative way that is inspiring. And in my opinion, or proven by the feedback I got from industry experts and brand specialists, uh -huh. brand consultants, it's they say it's right up there with Uber, with Amazon, with whatnot, the top uh, domain names. And I got that. So like I wrote in the chat, if it's a monopoly game, I have the boardwalk or the park place. <laughs> I always, I lived in Tokyo for 10 years and my analogy, yeah, the analogic way of saying what I have is yeah. I have that building at the Shibuya crossing. You know the place. Everybody knows this place because right. when you see a picture of Tokyo, it's 50% of all times this crossing where right. there is a million people walking everywhere. So when you have a building there, and you sell T-shirts, you will be certain that you will be selling T-shirts, tons of them. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah, it sounds interesting, and I agree. It's That's a tremendously valuable domain name, no doubt about it. It's not really a venture investment, though. Um, venture investors are looking for a business model that, you know, makes money with customers and so forth. What you have is more like a licensing deal, which is still tremendously valuable, but you would want to be talking, I think, to... Um, well, probably domain investors would be the place if you want to offload it anyway. Um, and and looking for partners who would appreciate those aspects because those are valuable, but those are not, uh, I'm trying to find the words, those are not the kind of deals that venture investors look at, right? We're looking at companies that are going to hire a bunch of people. And I know you could do that with this, but unless you have a plan for how you're going to hire people and recruit customers and develop revenues, this doesn't look like that as far as I can tell. Um, so unless, I mean, the traditional, the classic adventure investment is like, I have an idea. It's going to go from me, one person to a hundred people and a hundred million dollars in revenue by building something, solving some problem, et cetera. And I, I, I hear you about booking.com and so forth, but a venture investor would want to see how you're going to staff all that and build that engine. Does that make sense? Yes and no. I wouldn't dispute what you are saying, uh, except that, of course, I have an MVP also. This whole thing ah. grew, yes, it originally grew from my desire to build a service that uh, enables the booking of events, concerts. Uh, the yeah, the artist meets the organizer or the venue and a performance contract is made. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, this is not as promising right now anymore. However, it's the content of that MVP. I do have traction. Ah. I do have, yes, I do have that minimum of necessary traffic yeah. to, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so stop. But, I get it. So, so, okay, so here's the feedback. I didn't get any of that from your pitch. And I know it was two minutes and it was impromptu. I think you need to watch some videos about like how VCs want to pitch because what you talked about was legit was, you know, this idea and this animation and stuff. What investors want to hear is I have a business. This is how I'm going to make money. And in fact, if what you're saying is true, I've already built this. This is how much money I want to hear about the traction and the growth. Right. So it's a different pitch. So if that's the case, you need to like come up with those four or five bullet points in your head so you can spit those out at any length, however much time you have. And then people will react much more positively, I think. Thank you. I do not want to miss the chance, Scott, to make a commercial on my behalf right now. I would like to be in contact with you further because uh, I'm, I appreciate very much that you appreciate the value of uh, that, what I'm offering, even if my phrasing wasn't as optimum as you would have expected <laughs> oh however that's not what i uh it's not on the top of what i'm offering my it's the brand right mm -hmm. so 
right. if you, if somebody of your valuable contacts has any further interest, and mm -hmm. I've disclosed pretty much already, there's a lot more, of course, to see. Right. I'm happy to do it. So let's stay in contact. Okay, great. Thank well, you. Thank you. Hope to see you again. That was our friend Ulrich all the way from Berlin. And I think we're going to wrap up here with Ethan had a cleanup uh, question. Let me just look at the chat for a second. And Ethan, you're going to come on here for a second. Ketan, uh, thank you for the several comments there. Um, yeah, competitive advantages. That's a good question. Um, let's see. Another event like this. Yeah, Kian, sorry, I'm not doing a very good job of promoting myself, am I? So these are monthly. So I do this once a month, the fourth Tuesday of each month. I should create a sticker for that, shouldn't I? That's a good tip for me. Um, yeah, once a month at lunchtime, at least it's lunchtime for me. Um, and um, we're back with these. And of course, they're all archived on YouTube and also on Blog Talk Radio. And you can listen to them as much as you want. <laughs> and you can listen to the replays. And there's lots of good information here. People ask good questions. And sometimes I have guests come on. It's a, it's a show, basically, but it's designed to help you. So I think if you listen to these repeatedly, you'd probably... Um, you probably learn a few things, at least hopefully. So yes, monthly is the answer to that. Uh, Second question, I wanted to address this real quick. When we are approaching investors, let me put this one on the screen, Ethan, and then we're going to get to you. This is a great question. Um, Sayovash Mirzoev, um, you guys can read it, but um, for, those, for those of you listening to the podcast, when we are approaching investors, some say the investment we're raising is too small and some say it's too big. What should we do? Well, it depends on the investor, depends on your plan. Everybody's got a different opinion. That's the problem or the opportunity, I guess, in startup land is that it's up to you to come up with the vision. So usually founders ask for too little because things take longer and are more expensive than they expect. Obviously, on the other hand, if you ask for too much, then nobody's going to be interested, right? Or you're going to give away most of your company and you're going to be disappointed. So the in-between is up to you to figure out. And uh, I think it sounds like what you need to do, CEO Vush, sorry, I'm going to butcher that, CEO Vush, uh, is find some advisors who've been through this before. For example, attorneys who work in the venture capital space. And I don't just mean any attorney. I don't mean your cousin that does divorces or your friend who does personal injury law. I mean, people that do venture deals will have a sense for what the market is looking for. And this goes back to the discussion of valuation that we had back at the beginning of the, the show today. You want to have a number that is, you want to pick a number. That, that's the idea. And I don't know for you whether it's too big or too small, but you don't want to say, you want to have a range so that you just have some flexibility, but the range should not be uh, 200,000 to 2 million, right? Because those are different, those are different uh, investors. You want to have a number that's like, whatever it is, uh, $400,000 to $500,000 or something. So you have some wiggle room. You can get oversubscribed or undersubscribed. You don't want to be undersubscribed though. So if you pick a number, pick a number that you think sounds doable. So if you say we want to raise $250,000 as a pre-seed round, hopefully you're already thinking you can get 300 because everybody wants to be in on an oversubscribed round. So this is psychology, right? This is just horse trading. There's no magic to these numbers, but you want to pick a number that is achievable and looks good, but also covers the, the expenses that you need the money to, to use the money for, right? You've got real needs here. So if you're looking for you know, $2 million and you don't have any revenue, I, honestly, that's not going to happen these days unless you've got some magic with AI and you've got an amazing pedigree somehow. Um, a digestible number that is appropriate to the types of investors you're talking about. So my guess is, Sarvesh, is that you're talking to maybe different kinds of investors. So if some say it's too big, well, maybe that's because you're talking to angel investors and asking for $500,000. Angel investors tend to invest 20, 50, maybe 100 grand. So a $500,000 round means that you need five or 10 of those people, maybe more. So that's probably too big a number for angel investors. But $500,000 for a Series A venture firm is too small because $500,000 isn't, they probably the smallest deal they do is two or 3 million or 5 million these days. So 500,000 isn't worth their time. So that may be where you are uh, getting stuck. As we've talked about repeatedly today, you need to do research into who you're targeting, figure out how much they invest and what their sweet spot is, and then kind of work backwards maybe to your business plan and say, 
you know, I think the number might be whatever it is, you know, four and a quarter or two million, whatever it is. But here's why and have a logic to it that match. Here's my point that matches the interests and the demonstrated track record of the investors you're speaking to. So if you go and talk to late stage investors who typically write checks of $50 million, well, of course, your $500,000 round is too small. But if you're talking to your aunt and she's never invested at all in a startup, well, $500,000 is way too big. So research. There's the answer, research. Okay. All right. So now here's Ethan. Ethan's our cleanup hitter today. And we're going to put this away. And Ethan, you said you were in Toronto, right? Yes, I am. Well, nice to meet you. How did you hear about this? Uh, Meetup.com. I was actually just searched up startup and I saw it uh, yesterday, actually. So, yeah, we're all over Meetup. Cool. And let me remind everybody, if you're not on our newsletter list, and uh, you should be too, Ethan, uh, get on the newsletter list and then you'll hear about this directly. Actually, that's the answer to Kian was asking how often this is. Get on the newsletter list and then you'll hear about it. Okay. So let's talk about your question. If you could repeat it, please. Yeah. So basically I'm kind of, kind of stuck here. So I'm kind of looking for if my company's even investable or like investors were even like hesitate to even look at something like this. Right. So uh, I started off my company as a digital agency, right? Basically just web stuff. Um, there was like a bunch of stuff trending around where people are started doing subscription based. So kind of like productizing a service, for example, let's say if you want to your deck being rebuilt, you can order a deck, it's kind of like a product now. So it's not a service. It's like you can buy it off something off Amazon and somebody will come to your house and do it. So that's kind of how I transitioned my business as in for web apps and web design and stuff like that. Good for you. So, yeah. So basically it kind of, I told my clients that I already had about it and they love the idea. And I'm at the point right now where I, I'm getting a lot of work and work that I can't even take on. So I'm getting pretty popular right now. Great. So, and I want to, I want to expand to the point where I'm doing everything in digital right i'm doing for example copywriting mobile apps i want to do all that right right now i'm only doing web design ux ui and web apps so i was wondering if, i don't even know if this is even something that somebody would invest in or you know what i mean so so yeah oh it's a great question I, i'm glad you asked it so first of all congratulations it sounds like you're making progress it's <laughs> yeah, always thanks. nice to be in demand right I mean, yeah. that's way better than the alternative um so um Okay, so I want to point out to everybody what Ethan's doing there is a common issue and, a, and an opportunity. It sounds like he's done it fairly well here, which is turning a service into a product. This is one of the issues that affects investability, also affects uh, your lifestyle. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry, I got a tickle in my throat there. Talking oh, to okay. Um Okay, so um, an inexperienced investor is probably like your, your uncle or your cousin, you know, they might have an extra 10 grand or whatever. And they're like, Hey, you know, I'll give you 10 grand if you can pay me back, you know, for 15 grand in a year. Cool. That's fine. Right. That's the way the world works. If you want venture investors though, you're really talking about scalable stuff. And that's why services often need to be turned into products, which is what Ethan is doing because services require more people. And people are expensive. So if you're doing something like Ethan has been doing and building websites or um, pitch decks that require hands on work, it's hard to imagine that growing to be like a billion dollar business because simply you would need like 100,000 people because every step takes a lot of, you know, human involvement. It's kind of like uh, think about a hospital, right? You have all these people because it has to take people. And that's maybe a bad analogy because medicine has such a different business model. But the point is what he did there, it sounds like, is he took the pitch decks that required a lot of manual work and he's figured out ways that it can be more automatic and therefore people can just sign up and check out online and it kind of happens more automatically. Is that kind of the idea, Ethan? Yeah, yeah. Like honestly, right now, our all of our, like most of our clients right now are kind of startups, right? So basically let's say a startup doesn't want to hire a senior designer for $100,000 with benefits. Right. They come to us, right? Because you hire a designer they there's sometimes they don't have all, a lot of workload so the designer is just being paid and just sitting back laughing right so wow. right now we're basically monthly you can cancel at any time or you can continue it right so if you have a lot of work a startup usually comes to us hits us with this okay now we have your stuff done and then they just unsubscribe if they don't want anymore totally totally and that's great i'm i'm happy for you <laughs> i'm always i'm always pleased to hear when people can make that transition because it's not easy okay mm -hmm. so now the question ethan had is is it, is it investable so 
that leads to my question, which is when you talk about it being investable, the short answer is no, right? Because of what I just said, if you're talking about building it, well, from a venture point of view, right? Because it's hard to imagine with an assumption, I'm not done, but um, if you're talking about building an agency that uh, takes your expertise and you hire 10 and then 20 and then 50 and then a thousand people, hopefully and become a global conglomerate that does this, um, mm. that means you can have a thousand people on the payroll. So that is not going to be a typical venture um, model investment, right? Because what VCs are looking for mostly these days, and I'm talking in very broad strokes here, right? Um, what most VCs are looking for is, hey, you can do this and it, it's you today, but it's going to be five people and then 10 people. But then, you know, you might get top out about 20 people because the other 800 people's worth of work is being done by the software. And that's what you see happening with, you know, whatever, with Meta or with... Um, Spotify or Salesforce or any of these big software companies, right? The software kicks in or Amazon, right? Because it's the Amazon. Well, they've gotten into logistics and stuff too, but but that the transactional stuff is all done without people's involvement. And that's why there's been such a big boom in, in um, startups because software just means things can take off like rockets if you pick the right one or Uber, right? Mm -hmm. um, so my question for you is when you talk about scaling, are you thinking this is Ethan plus some really cool software and a couple people, or are you thinking this is Ethan plus five and then 15 and then 50 people? Um, yeah, I'm kind of like, cause right now I'm doing every last bit of work by myself, right? I'm right now. It's like, I'm on a good month. It's I'm bringing home $10,000 a month. Right. So <laughs> I, that's, that's only me. So I'm working like 10 hour days, right? It's like, I'm at right. the age where I have the energy too. I don't really, I don't really have nothing to lose right now. So that that's kind of that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Every but I feel like if I do end up having a, let's say I hire a CEO to like kind of help me out here, or yeah. then I can start hiring more people. Kind of like uh, Top Doll, right? So they have basically a bunch of people in their pipeline, like a bunch of engineers and designers in their pipeline, and then mm -hmm. when they do get a call, they send them over. So that's kind of kind of what I'm kind of looking to do. Just have people that I have ready to call. If I do, for example, let's say I get a thousand people, I'm at the point where I'm getting a thousand people calling my phone. And then yeah. I have, okay, let's say I have 500 designers ready to call and hire right yeah. then and there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a cool model. I mean, that that's what, um, in a different context, you might call BPO. You might not have heard that term, business process outsourcing. That's actually a big deal, in especially in other parts of the world. Like in India, there are huge teams of lower cost designers, programmers, mm -hmm. customer service people, call centers, or the Philippines. Like a lot of times if you call customer service now, you get somebody in the Philippines because um, they speak English there, at least I mean here in North America. Um, and you're setting up a, a, a team of people who are kind of on call, right? So yeah, that is definitely a thing. It's not typically a venture investment though, because like mm. I said, most venture investments are about software. What it can be is a really good business though, yeah. right? <laughs> if you don't need venture yeah. investors, right? Um, mm. I literally, I had lunch yesterday with, with a friend who runs a business process outsourcing firm. Um, and uh, his back office is, I forget, somewhere in India, right? And he's doing really well, right? Because mm -hmm. he's he's kind of the, you think of yourself, maybe you don't do the work anymore, but he's more like the marketing front end. So he markets these services into the United States because he lives here. But when the order comes in, he sends it over to India where the cost is like, you know, a quarter yeah, yeah. of what he's doing, right? So yeah. I can see you scaling in that way. And that's interesting. But again, probably not a venture investment, but there's other types of investors in the world, right? Like we talked about loans. You could probably, you know, once you have the cash flow, you can loan and take a loan and, and grow it. Or there are plenty of people who are interested just in a simple, you know, double your money every four years. That's a, that's a great deal. Right. Mm -hmm, so yeah. uh, it just may not be the, my world per se. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's honestly yeah. exactly what I need to hear. I just, I, did, I didn't know, right. Somebody brought it up one day and I was like, okay, yeah. I should, don't, I don't know anything about this. So I was like, right, oh, right. Uh, yeah. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Sure. And the, you know, the more you can digitize it, the more it starts to move into venture investing. So mm -hmm. that, okay. that would be interesting. And there's lots of activity for that in Toronto. I'm sure you could find out more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, nice to meet you. Thanks for being yeah, you here. You too. Thanks. And, uh, see you next time. I hope. <laughs> All righty. So, okay. Well, that's probably our show for the day for wow, We went almost two hours here. So I hope this is helpful to you. I'm happy to be here and do this for you. Um, let me just mention our sponsors again. So we have this one. I didn't talk much about this today, but the idea here is if you go and list your startup, that VCs will find you, right? And I'm helping, it's going to take a while. Like I said, these are in beta, but if you get listed here, it gives you all these opportunities to talk about your company. You shouldn't put anything too confidential, of course, but you can categorize yourself so that other 
um, so that investors who are interested in your type of categories can find you. And it's a visibility problem. So that's one of the things I've found in my years of venture work is that a lot of founders are brilliant, but they're just not in the loop. They're not insiders. And I'm trying to make this more transparent and increase access for everybody who deserves to have access. And then this one we talked about several times. Uh, you can go here and find investors specifically targeted, right? So you don't waste your time with a broad brush. You can identify the people who, with whom you want to build relationships because they have a track record of interest in your kind of startup. And then these guys, Cake, my good friends at Cake, um, are here with that link. Uh, if you're if you're early stage and you have a company set up, and you're thinking about hiring and expanding, you want to build your cap table so that in capitalization table, which lists all the owners of your company, and that is a complicated to. Uh, to manage after you issue more shares and then there's stock options and then there's different valuations and there's discounts and it gets messy fast. And to be honest, most startups kind of fall down on this. They have their lawyers do it and they pay a lot of money for it, right? Because the lawyers are not cheap. And then you've got lawyers doing like spreadsheet stuff, which honestly, lawyers aren't really trained for. <laughs> so it gets messy. And Cake is my uh, preferred solution for um, solving that kind of problem. So if you haven't gone to cakeequity.com, you should and could do that. And I think they'll take good care of you. Tell them I sent you. And there's a discount code there too. Okay. So lovely to see you all. Um, thanks for all the participation. We have full house today. And a bunch of you uh, still here watching after almost two hours. So thank you for that. Would really appreciate if you can like and share and follow and all that stuff. Um, this is a free to air, free to everybody sort of service. And I'm honestly trying to help people. So if this is helpful to you, wouldn't you please click like and subscribe and tell some friends and i'll be here next month again on the fourth tuesday i think it's the 27th or something I, I can't look right now i might lose the connection but anyway whatever that fourth tuesday is and um Kitan says yeah um Kitan says do it at a different time yes yeah, 2 a.m in india yeah that's true um yeah maybe i've been thinking about doing more of these i just there's only so many hours in my day i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> you might actually, by the way, we run masterminds workshops. Get on the list that I told you about, guys. This is We also run smaller groups like this where everybody comes on camera at once and talks together. These are really fun. And I try to do those once a month as well. Uh, but I alternate those with in-person and online. So I haven't done one online lately. Those are a lot of fun. Those aren't free, though, because like, we use the money to um, make sure that only serious people in the room. It's $20, I think. Uh, or it's free if you bring a question, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to join me for those, that would be a great way to get more acquainted with many of you. All right. That's enough of this today. I hope you go out and have a great day. And I especially hope that your startup continues to make progress. You can do this. It has been done before, as you well know, and you could be the next one to do it right. So I hope this is helpful to you. Please tell your friends and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.